Hi, I know you've been waiting for a game review, right? Right? It's gonna be 30th anniversary! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I played the first six games of the Kirby series. Before we start, I know this was supposed to be Pokemon Mystery Dungeons post game, but the post game is bland and nothing to do. We meet some Pokemon for no reason. We make friends, complete the dojo, and get the highest rank, and fuck off. I knew it just should have ended when we died. Everyone knows Kirby. The pink cute ball of happiness and murder with amazing games. Let's just start. Kirby's Dreamland, released on the 27th of April, which is today, hopefully, in Japan, and 1st and 3rd August in USA and Europe, respectively, all in 1992, which was surprising for a Game Boy game to have localization this fast. But it makes sense because the game hardly makes use of text. You can see Kirby on the box art is actually white because Sakurai is said to stick to the game art which is just white. As you can see the, the control buttons of the real console are bad. Stage 1. Green Greens. Your typical Kirby level which anyone familiar with Kirby knows. I just, just flew over it. Which you might think that's not the full Kirby experience. Yes it is. There will obviously be floating over the levels in future games. God, I love avoiding problems. I was still stumped about how I couldn't jump on the enemies like in Gaming Plumber Man. After going through the level, we have our first mini boss or mid boss. Poppy Bros Senior, the senior version of these enemies. For the whole time, I have been calling them what I like because when playing, their names were never mentioned. This is the first time I was confused by the fact that my air blows weren't damaging it. It's because bosses aren't meant to be easy. They'll throw projectiles which we'll have to inhale and throw back at them. Which makes it the main thing of Kirby. After more levels and stages, whatever you want to call them, we reach the main boss, Wispy Woods. Pretty straightforward, you can provide, it can provide trouble sometimes. You just throw the falling apples back at it and it's done. Stage 2. Castle. Low low low. Yes, it is the name. I was pretty confused about getting into doors because I kept pressing A instead of up. Then we have another mini boss known as Low Low Low. Yes, it says castle. He just throws blocks like every other boss but travels in a row so it's mildly tricky to keep up because these row bosses never try to hit Kirby but avoid it so it becomes even harder and time consuming. The designs of the levels are quite interesting providing how they connect to each other so wildly, wildly in the sense of confusing. We then have the main boss low 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 and la la la. Just low 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 but another one. Yeah, they're dead. After a long time. Stage 3 Float Islands. Before anything, the stage song slap. This stage has water elements. Yes, Kirby can swim and it takes place on a ship. Pretty cool. Now we have the real boss known as Kabula. Carries a cannon. I liked how they gave us the ability to fly without buttons here, and also our air blows do hurt it because, and it goes as far as it can because we got a ability or item, if you will. Pretty easy, but also hard. Just because I had to reset as I had one health. Stage four, bubbly cloud. Also has a calming theme. Takes place in the air. Probably the hardest stage in the game. We then have Krakow Jr. I originally thought this was the full boss being so hard it took a very long time. After that we arrive to the real boss Krakow harder than its junior and then I forgot to record and how I beat it nor do I remember I promise I didn't cheat. This game made me think a lot about cheating but I put in my urges. Stage 5 Mount DDD, the final stage. Here we are only to wait all the four bosses again to unlock DDD. This is where I also thought was the killing of these innocent creatures justified just my Undertale dilemma. Don't worry. And then I accidentally loaded the crack of file only to wait it again with much ease. I don't know how, of course, the bosses that already gave me trouble 
were kind of easier but still had there's a little kirby that appears in front of the boss's door when we are about to reach it which i originally thought will attack me it's just kills every enemies on screen after beating all the bosses i come into the ddd stage this was it the final challenge of this game kind of easy kind of hard fighting ring makes ddd a lot more threatening at first i didn't understand how to attack since he wasn't throwing anything after a long time i figured out that we have been playing the stars that came out on his attacks after that it was pretty easy to beat him my heart was pounding throughout the fight as it's always great when finishing a new game i was overjoyed on landing the last hit kirby literally blasts away ddd and in the cut scene it shows that ddd stole the food of the people so literally blowing him out of the building breaking men the mentioned building which causes co- much impact to a normal creature was justified anyway we get a good credit scene and kirby bra- buys us off it unlocks hard mode and king ddd getting angry well that was kirby's dreamland really great game nice introduction to the kirby franchise now we get into the main game of the video kirby's adventure released in 1993 surprisingly short time since the last game for the nes i won't get into the dates as they are just boring kirby now has fully marketed as pink though in the box art it only had a shade of pink anyway it's in color now opening of the game gives us the iconic kirby drawing tutorial which is just so amazing level 1 vegetable valley it now has proper levels to go into now This is mind blowing at least for then because all you had back then was gaming plumber. I may think it's the great test NES game. The cut scenes are even cuter than the first game. Just like the original, I fly over first few stages and now it has a proper reward ending screen which I didn't understand at first. It also has a mini game in which it was the crane game which I didn't get the hang of the controls at all. Meet Poppy Bros Senior again. Well, it was basically like the last, so we need not go further in depth. There's also abilities in this game which makes Kirby what it is. Earlier, power-ups used to play the role of abilities, but here it's the main part of the game and adds so much more quality. Another mid boss known as Mr. Frosty, one of the more iconic ones, but I kind of question his placement in the forest. But yeah, it just throws ice blocks like any other mid boss and defeated easily. At the end of the level, we meet Wispy Woods, which is even harder now. But I beat it on my first try. So oh, take it as you will. Level two, Ice Cream Island. Much like Float Islands, it takes place on an island and some of a ship. We get another mini game in which eggs are to be thrown by ddd and caught by us i kind of froze when i saw ddd so it was a big fail another mid boss grand wheel one of the more unique bosses are that leave its subordinates for us to inhale and attack it while it does what a wheel does like the next stage we meet another mid boss the meta knights yes you heard that right don't worry it will be serviceable later these actually appear multiple times in the game and all always hurt you can hurt them with air blows but after only but for only half the damage it's just better to inhale one and throw at the other after beating them we get a neat convenience get a neat convenience where we inhale one of the two guys for their ability and let me tell you laser is the best ability and it saves me so much in this game then we meet another mid boss known as mr tiktok it sends out music notes but i had an ability so it was easy also i never really absorbed mid boss but they give you special abilities like here kirby gets to scream which is stupidly waste now it unlocks the arena which is stupidly easy with an ability you get a m tomato killing you fully i know and can exploit this very well then after another level we unlock the star station which gives warp stars to earlier levels like a normal person would think i thought it would be for every level but it's only for the first three. then we have the final boss of this level paint roller it draws things and shoots at us and everything having different quality this is the most unique boss yet 
I originally beat this on the first but because in the next stage I hit load instead of save I had to do it again but this time so many tries were taken I don't know why but it seems so much harder Level 3 Butter Building In the first stage I couldn't find the door at first because it's so hidden this is the first instant of a reoccurring mid-boss being Mr. TikTok and in the next stage meet another mid-boss as Bugsy which was unnecessarily hard. Here I make a mistake again of loading at the wrong point. This is where the hard part started actually. Then I beat it after turns of tries and finally the rage ended for now at least. Then we have another grand wheelie fight which is completely optional so I did not do it. Then we fight Bugsy again, so many unnecessary mid bosses. The next stage is honestly confusing to her as to how many doors this connects. The next stage was the Meta Knight's battle. This stage was supposed to be fairly easy, but I got the needle ability at first, so it ruined the chances of success at first. Then we had another mid game known as Quick Draw which is probably the hardest since I don't know what to do. Next up is a mid boss known as Bonkers, a hammer wielding monkey throwing coconuts which was fairly easy. And then we have the boss battle with Mr. Shine and Mr. Bright. Another unique pair of bosses which is so I say necessarily hard. The day and night cycle mechanics work so well unfortunately due to the laser ability I didn't experience them to the fullest here but in the next main game we will which actually shows the hard part level 4 grape garden this is the perfect time to talk about how this game is both phenomenal and annoying with its level design it just feels so gorgeous and alive to traverse through these levels and murder everything inside it's not only here but also in the last levels that there are certain hidden switches that used to unlock mini games so that's pretty cool but some are too too hidden. This is where I also properly learned the controls for the crane minigame. Back to the level designs. They both complement and ruin the environment for some stages due to feeling a little odd but the levels in themselves are beautiful. Then we encounter two poppy bros seen which if I inhale them both at the same time it gives a random ability. Which gave me cutter which is pretty disappointing. I also had another chance at quick draw which was surprisingly okay for me. And then come the A stages, one had come before but not as annoying. These are simply annoying and challenging, I am just finding an excuse to appreciate the game now. Then we unlock another arena that is Bugsy which is very hard. So no, now you can see me backtracking to Mr. Frosty's arena and laser ability which makes the game lot easier. Trust me. Also, did I tell you that soundtrack absolutely slaps? This is probably for every game now. We meet another mid boss named Rolling Turtle, which is basically a half copy of Bugsy, but still fine. I still don't know why this metal knight looking guy is always giving us the hyper ability. I missed it at first, but now here. Well then, foreshadowing that we have in a Meta Knights battle, which is probably the hardest one yet because I forgot to save the game the first time and another time and another proving this fight to be actually easy. Then I forgot to record, so here's the final boss crack, which was exceptionally tricky being a platforming battles on to them where it could be easy, but. <laughs> The thing I didn't understand at first was how easy was it with the high jump ability after I inhaled it in the battle. It made the battle too, too easy. Level 5 Yogurt Yard. After a couple of stages, we meet bonkers again. You know how it goes, except it was harder than I expected before most of the earlier part of the stage I depleted my HP. And then we have in nether meta knight so it with mostly the melee versions of the meta knight so it was too easy then we made the fire knight which doesn't have anything fire about it because i beat it too quickly the laser ability can also bounce off corners giving a big edge in certain stages then we made the final boss heavy mode it digs through the terrain while throwing things to attack him 
as not unique at first glance but it gets so crazy it can soft lock us in different places keeping up the pace while attacking is hard so i eventually got the laser ability for this then too it was hard but a little less but the design seems so confusing and great the way it mines it's so uh, unexplainable which i like level 6 orange ocean we meet the rolling turtle again why but we can skip that so we well then we skip the sixth stage because dementia then we have to choose two parts two poppy bro seniors or two mr frosties i did both on my both of them then we have another meta knights battle which is similar to an older one and so you know how it goes fails and wins then in the final boss we have the meta knight yes the actual meta knight i wasn't sure at first for it because the design wasn't clear and i jokingly assumed it was meta knight knight and i don't want to talk about it why he gives us a sword and keeps us helping throughout the game because well meta knight isn't the main boss of this game he's considered a rival to kirby a respectable rival of sort and the rest i leave for later with spamming the sword it's an easy victory but i wanted a lot more majesty majesting being foreshadowed being defeated so easily oh, it wasn't a choice but i did it anyway on defeating his mask breaks and seems to look like a dark version of kirby explaining the rivalry and flies away hiding behind escape level 7 rainbow resort the final level also the hardest in the second stage of the level we get a segment of tower of mid bosses fighting every one of them again this is kind of like the first game but even longer and harder since you can't heal in between i did have the laser ability making it easier nothing much but the usuals giving me trouble here we also see the fire in the fire line now we have the level which i absolutely despise in spite of their design as the designs made to be annoying then we meet grand wheelie again but because we can use a bomb ability provided to us earlier it's an instant kill which is actually a speedrun tactic also this and then we go to dreamlands green greens in full black and white like on the game boy but the things were different but okay at the end they changed it so it seems like we are going through all the stages of dreamland again which was a great touch now we finally have what you all been waiting for the boss of the game king ddd disappointed how he didn't have his theme i had to break i had to backtrack all the way to laser we beat him with not much changes because it's really has well it's very similar to the first one with no real changes now we beat it and level 8 fountain of brains yes he begs kirby and kirby just throws him back and we take that star rod triggering the real final boss of this game nightmare free king ddd land launches us in the air it was a fun segment rendering that ddd was protecting dreamland all along mm, the nightmare is a ball of stars consisting mostly of star throwing attacks and we can store thus and we can throw stars too with the star rod and fly indefinitely this was extremely annoying and i mean extremely hard to the batter actually has a time limit if you're too late it takes you to the grounds and fly away killing you time is important here but the only thing to be done is spam since everyone does spam for it after an extremely long and by that i mean 15 minutes or so i finally defeated end of suffering let's go second phase is now real it transforms into a wizard looking like a real nightmare which is more difficult since it renders attacks useless with its cape and the health carries over so i was mostly like 1 hp the whole battle you can only damage his, him when his cape is off and if you do it it just takes 6 attacks or so because it has so many combinations like its first phase to memorize and then i died i came back with full hp and in the second phase 
so that's that it was so stressful because most of my attacks just won't hit after like half an hour the credits show because show us the story that everyone was having nightmares in dreamland and ddd protected the star out from nightmare and the last sentence was hardly contradictory we then returned the star rod and it plays the final bosses of every stage beaten by the creators themselves probably how it should have been beaten but still fine so that was Kirby's adventure which i deem as the best nes game ever it was a phenomenal experience and probably the definite definitive kirby experience for the ones who want to start from the starting though i still recommend playing dreamland before to understand a bit of the story it was also really released on the 3ds with the 3d classics being the spotlight of the library even though it didn't have any changes i just can't talk i just can't stop talking about this game next game Kirby Pinball Land released for the Game Boy in 1993. Since pinball games were getting popular, Kirby had a take on it too as well. But it was bad. The controls are horrendous and if you're telling me this is right and this is left, I'm going to snap. For a Kirby game, it's really weak. Somehow the Europe wanted it to be the best selling game for two months straight by the game critics liking it. I thought I was the outcast in this situation, but seeing how everyone in the community also considered this bad, it isn't surprising. You just go through three boards to get to DDD and hit him a couple of times to beat it. And I couldn't beat it because I'm so bad at having a great game and a bad game right after for the Kirby series. Just wasn't right. I'm very disappointed. Next game, another spin off Kirby's Dream Course, a spin off on Mini Golf. Great gameplay, great music, great graphics. This is how a Kirby spin off game should be done. Yeah, though I'm bad at it, it's pretty addictive. Final boss is, of course, DDD hitting it uh, multiple times for the victory. I would definitely like to try it again in my free time next game another spin-off kirby's avalanche originally supposed to be a puyo puyo game like in japan but it was localized into a kirby with kirby and elements making it more out of place it's the only kirby game to not have released in japan possibly where kirby got its iconic puyo sound from this game also has voice acting Tabu. uh yeah it's pretty weird but manageable also Kirby is just straight up savage in this game which joys and confuses me emotionally. I don't even want to talk about this anymore. Next next game Kirby's Dreamland 2 released for the Game Boy in 1995 being a sequel to the Dreamland level and grassland nothing much just your average Kirby first Kirby level. The ending screen now can provide rewards for jumping higher. Then we meet a mid boss known as Efriti and every mid boss now traps a pet or so a ride animal which has extra pros and cons of ability as in able to do or well anything else. And an extra health bar. Here we get Rick the hamster probably the worst one since it cannot fly. Hamsters need to fly. Then we have the last boss of the level Wispy Woods. Um okay I'll just leave I guess. Then we flee the country for the next level Big Forest. We get another animal friend. And there, yes, that's what it's called. Kuda, probably the best one since it can fly and also has a heroic riding theme that I still can't get over. The levels have less stages now, so it gets over faster. And yes, I know it's confusing saying levels and stages interchangeably, but I hope it gets better. And then we meet Jumper Shoot, another mid boss based on a popular Japanese yokai. Then the animal side gives us Gooey because we were already riding an animal and Gooey gives us just one HP. Disappointing. Then the final boss of this level are Nruff and Nelly. Much like Lolo and La La La. Then they spawn wild bows to attack and sometimes bombs. They're dead. Level 3 Ripple Field. We meet a Master Green. Master Green. A jellyfish after killing it, we get Kind Sunfish. Kind the sunfish being able to go against the water current like normal fish this game also plays the level clear sound effect less and finish the higher you go the final boss these are really coming too fast maybe i'm just speaking too fast sweet stuff it's it's much not different 
from it the boss is that only that just it's moving and shoots more projectiles and because we are in water we can blow and hurt it too easy and i know i'm going pretty fast now but i don't have any time and i already repeated this three times already so please level 4 ice work we meet another me boss blocky which doesn't have an animal trap it just lands and throws stones not much then we meet jumper shoot again and the same story repeats the level design of this game isn't meant to be good but just annoying most of the levels are just too too annoying then i get a dose of the sweet sweet dementia again we meet a free three again repeating the same story for the end time the final boss i was like what a cute dragon flying through its tail and breathing ice oh god it loves homicide but we aren't less homicidal either level 5 red canyon we meet master green again and i heard so many reuses of mid bosses it's so boring then we meet why you probably the more unique one since it does ninja tricks and some non ninja tricks anyway it was hard but you get the gist of it pretty fast and it's easy then we find each of the meta knights guarding every animal in any guarding an animal in every door the way you beat him is to get hurt because of the invulnerability we charge into it and kill it or well you can just use an ability but i'm too stupid then we meet captain stitch the one who charges and throws needles only for us to throw back at it well it can't get hurt if it has his needles pretty easy if you get the hang of it like the others and the final bosses are mr shine and mr bright we meet again and this is the one where it's the hard part they have like this ultimate attack which only doesn't hurt if you're in the shade but most of the time the shade is either too far or they immediately attack after it i want to say it's easy but it's really not it's really hard and not for the wrong reasons this time i enjoyed it avoiding the attacks was extremely hard but when you avoid the avoid once the other attacks come in but when you do get it right it feels like heaven only to be destroyed right after with some moderate luck i do beat them reaching level 6 cloudy park we made jumper shoot again and i don't want to talk about this anymore this game has many and i mean many auto scrolling levels which are just too too fast another murder of capped and stitch later i'm on a hit list after that there is this really annoying auto scrolling level as i said they're too annoying then we get a rank up on the hit list from master green's death it's auto scrolling well air pressure hell again and then the final boss is krako well we spawn on the cloud so we're standing on krako its eyes pops out sometimes to attack and it's pretty easy and then well the second phase trolling because i'm always left at 1 hp after the fight i immediately die and it restarts the whole battle but even in its second phase it's pretty easy if i didn't get hit at least once every time so i had to adapt with the trolling somehow 2 hp in hand i go rushing and swearing to troll and deceive the opponent and look it's that man i love trolling level 6 dark castle the final level we meet Efriti, master green mr frosty vayu blocky captain stitch jumpers shoot all the mid bosses at the end of each level it's final jam for the final boss king ddd and he does have his theme this time except he's half asleep the time and half angry the time his moves are powered up when hang when angry but the moves are pretty much the same and throwing except throwing his hammer has a bomb and breathing things and after beating it we get the credit see disappointing ending leading to nothing except the names of the enemies listed but it's not the true ending and we triggered a false one while writing the script on the wiki i found out that you have to get some rainbow drops in all of the levels to unlock the true final boss which i actually I'm supposed to do when I'm writing the script, so yeah, I'll be back in a bit. Uh, okay, so I'm back. I don't need to tell you how I got the rainbow drops because it's, uh, it's just boring. And please don't just look up a guide on YouTube to do it. Also check the wiki alongside it. So then we beat DDD for the second time, and the dark shadow rises up, and the rainbow drops all combine to make a sword. The shadow forming into a night like creature which is just kind of the second phase of nightmare. After a long time I beat it only to find the second phase being the first phase of nightmare. I tried it, I tried it way too many times until I decided to cheat.
yes cheating i know it's a controversial topic but i had to i had less time to finish the video and i also had to do the ending the ending just shows and the animals and ddd looking into the sky and a rainbow appears i know this is supposed to mean a lot but uh, i felt it wasn't worth for the fight next game because i'm tired and this is the last one kirby block ball released for the game boy in 1995 in japan and in 1996 in america and europe it's a breakout clone with a twist it has anime i didn't play it fully through because i wasn't as amused by it but it's still a fun and mildly addictive game and that's it i really like the kirby games it was a fun introduction to the series these kirby games are really good in terms of their time especially kirby's adventure i would definitely play the next entries in the series on a game review though i do want to put some other games in between too this was a great experience i love the story and fights which might be a little repetitive but still addictive i also haven't given any ratings because i don't think ranking this game these games would be enough to show their worth i really recommend the series and as i know ddd should have had his theme in adventure